Get that thing, man. You're off that one, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to strip it. It don't hurt if you strip it. These diamonds go together and make a box. I mean, you've been drawing these little boxes ever since you were a child. They make a box. Three diamonds makes a box. Put them together like this. They make a star. Or three boxes. Look at it this way. Does that turn that around? Is that three boxes or is it a star? Any of you see the star? Huh? Hmm? Any of you see the boxes? The three boxes stacked up. See it? <laughs> it's kind of cool, huh? Made out of diamonds. Very attractive. Old, old quilt pattern uh, called a walk in the, in the garden. Been around for hundreds of years. Uh, had these in tile, tile uh, in back in Roman days, tile pattern. This pattern was in, found it in tile. So, I can take this here. And I need that screwdriver back. It's here. Come take these out too, but <laughs> yeah. Take that one out. I don't know if there's another in there or not, but I want to take this fence off. <laughs> over here. There's a couple over here. One there. Yeah, exactly. Oh yeah. So what we're going to do, we're going to set up and make these diamonds. I call it, I call it fun with 30 degrees. And I have this little instrument here. And uh, I keep it set at 30 degrees. So I can replicate this. So I can cut, I can cut some of those diamonds. And uh, when I turn this saw to 30 degrees, then I can come and check it here. Actually, this is set on 60 degrees, right? That's both angles, 60 degrees. You get it to where to fit that, it'll make boxes or stars or diamonds or whatever you want to for you. Ah, we got rid of it. Got rid of the table, now I can see the video. Hey Don, can yeah. you use that tool to check your pieces that you were trying to fine tune? You sure can. That'll help you get in the ballpark, yeah. You sure can use that tool to check those pieces. Yeah, I like this saw. It's uh, it's always got a. Well, it'll get you close. It'll help you get close. Oh, okay, thank you. But you've always got to wiggle in. You've always got to come back to the, to the bolt. Uh, you, I don't know why it is. Uh, you can set it as accurate as you want, uh, with blocks or whatever, and it never fits the first time. You you all I've always had to wiggle in. Uh, see you later. Okay, I've set this at uh, at 30 degrees, and I can take one of these strips and I can saw it. <laughs> the lock got moved in somehow. The other come out of there now. Then. Okay, I can saw that at 30 degrees. I can turn this around. And clamp it to here. Where did my clamp go? But before I clamp it to there, I need a stop. Let me cut in a second. If I take this first one and put it against that one, can you get a picture of that? All right, I want to bring this down, lock it in place. Whoa! Put this up there against the saw blade. Shove that up there against it. Now I can clamp this down now. Effectively what I've done here is I cut a piece, 30 degree angle on it, we hope, 
and I took this part and put it up against the blade of the saw and set that stop back here. So potentially this and this ought to be the same length now. All four sides should be the same length. A equals B equals C equals D. What's that? Parallelogram. Parallelogram, that's right. But I used the cut itself to set the saw to set the stop here. So if I, th this is, of course, we know that this is a further distance than this width because we've cut across it at an angle. Now if I put this down here like that, that's not a whole lot to hold that thing. I may have to put the fence back on here. Uh, oh. I'll try it like this. We may have to put the fence back on. I produced a diamond. Haven't made a measurement yet other than I decided what width I wanna <laughs> I wanted to grip this at. So in these you've got to have three to uh, come to any <laughs> easy cutting, huh? Just just move it forward. Side grain to end grain. Side grain to end grain, end grain to side grain, all the way around. Got a hole in it. It's got a hole, it doesn't fit. I'm not at 30 degrees. I use this verger on here. Let's see, that's 31.6. Oh, great. And 22 and a half, it's hard to determine what, what, what 30 degrees is on this, on this particular saw, but I think it's that mark right. Whoops, come on. Right, right, right. Maybe right there. And of course it slips. When I try to tighten it up on exactly 30 degrees, it wants to fall into detent at 31.6. Bear with me a minute, I'll make it work. Hey, I think I got it. Start over. This end's no good. This end is no good. Put that up against the blade. One thing is this this causing me a problem here. Yeah, the carbide on the T. Somebody come and hold that saw in that position right there. So that I'm up against the carbide. And let's see. Are we are at 90, aren't we? Is that read 90 there? Zero. Where's the stop for that? Yeah. I don't see the stop. That's close enough. Okay. Oops, get away. The tape won't stick. I must not be 3M tape. I'll use a 3M tape. I'll use a 3M tape. Need stretchy tape. We'll stretch it around the shoulders. <laughs> All right, thank you. All right, now back to the same process here. Cut three more diamonds. I like the guard on that saw. It flops down there and you, makes you feel safe. Uh, if I were doing this at home, I'd have a longer push stick here, y'all. My hand would be way, way back here. Pretty close. Not quite, but pretty close. 
I don't know, that might work. If I sat around, I'd do everybody take a look at it. You cut enough of them, you get the star pattern. You can do this. When you get enough blocks cut, all these different colors, make this pattern. These make great coasters. There's other things you can do with them too. Those two that I passed around, these are, these are in groups of 16. And what I do with them, I'll put a wedge in between these two. These will be left flat. I'm going to make a circle out of these to put on one of those one of those bowls. And uh, I'll get them right in a minute. There they are. I'm going to make a circle out of this. So I'm going to put a wedge in between them. One of these wedges like is in this Christmas tree ornament right here. I'm going to cut some of the wedges like the pine wedges I was cutting a while ago. Put in between them and I'll make a circle out of this. Then it'll be a decorative circle for one of my big urns. I'll have these going all the way around it. You can't cut an angle on these blocks here because as soon as you cut an angle on it, here's a diamond point right here. As soon as you cut that angle, you're flattening it off. When you put it in the lathe and turn it, the point goes flat. And uh, there's nothing tackier than a flatty pointed diamond. <laughs> so make these up in six segments of 16, glue them up. This will be cut off here and here. This is just some extra diamonds. You stick them up, you cut the tip of them off, leave about a quarter of an inch above and blow the box. Cut them off, put the wedges in there, make circles, glue them onto, well I'll show you in a minute. You'll see the big, see the real thing. How much time we got? Oh, we got plenty of time. All right, I got a box back here I call this. It's got a, it's got a thing on it called show and tell. I got lots of stuff in here. I mean, lots of stuff. Uh, we need to move this somewhere. Let me get this out of here without messing up everything. All right, can you arrange that camera over this way? Where's that? Give me that little short stool, would you? Maybe I can sit on this. Okay, this is my show and tell box I take to the classes. Here's one of the big urns. 16 pieces. There's the decorative circle I was telling you about. This one's made out of chevrons. And it's had some holes drilled and some plugs put in there out of different color woods. It's got the plywood in. You can see the red, black, and white plywood there above and below. Uh, decorative, plus it keeps, uh, it keeps, if there's one, one piece of it shifts from due to you know, wood drying out and so forth, it's not portrayed through to the other pieces. There's a lot of veneer in there, veneer between these pieces. We turn that up, this will cut off here down at the bottom. Put a lid on this or a neck, whatever. Put a finial on it. There are a lot of different ways you can decorate them. I use lacquer for the most part. If we're, at the, we're at the classes at Campbell and you got to have something that dries fast. You don't have a whole day to finish. you got to finish up on Friday afternoon, so I use uh, spray lacquer. Here's an interesting one. Look at the bottom. Look at the sides. 16 pieces. Set that saw up just like we did for those wedges a while ago. Make 16 pieces form a circle, except you know, we're, using, we're making them wider. So we cut 16 pieces times three, do them together in a brick fashion like you're laying brick and you get that effect. At the bottom, you've got a board glued up, it's walnut, each side, and it's got some other woods between them. But the walnut on one side is wider than the walnut on the other side. Turn around to the camera.